Peace everyone, Unmask Art here and welcome back to the pastel tutorial. Today we are getting started on the hair. Last week we did some refinement on the skin. We uh, finished up the, the face and the neck area as well and then just kind of touched up the skin overall. Uh, I still think there's plenty of work that I could do to the skin to really just kind of make it just better. Um, but for where I wanted to get it last week, that's where I got it. And now I'll, I'll just kind of leave the rest for the polishing stage. I really just wanted to get into the hair. So I have a couple new colors uh, that I'll be adding for the hair. But uh, the first two familiar colors that I'm using is 110 and black, uh, which is 750. Um, so these two colors we've already used throughout this project, so the, those aren't new, but I will be using those for the hair. The two new colors, however, are two brown colors. Uh, one is 635 and the other is 625. And um, yeah, so those are the colors that we'll be using for the base of the hair. Uh, and we'll really, I'm, I'm gonna try to just get the base of the hair done today. Hey Cece, uh, Gina, Carrie, Marcy, G uh, Gila, uh, Sergio, good to see you as well. Uh, Artisan Academy, hello, thank you for uh, coming by, and Sneaks, good morning to you. Uh, so what I'm going to do here for the hair, now I've done, I've done several tutorials on hair, and I'm going to kind of just uh, hit the key points. Now there's certain rules. I want to I want to separate the rules from the procedure. So rules on hair. Rule number one is always work in the direction that the hair is flowing. Um, rule number two is focus on maximizing the contrast. And rule number three is to just um, get your colors, get get accurate colors. Um, now the procedure, the first step is to block in the large shapes. And because a lot of the hair is really dark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my black and I'm actually going to just block in all of the really dark shades of the hair. And so that is the first step that you want to take. So none of this uh, should be difficult at all. Hair is very, very easy if you follow these very simple steps. Oh, hey, Chrissy, good to see you. Andy, Tess, uh, Chandri, good to see you as well. Uh, and of course, if you guys have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. Happy to take on some questions. There is still a lot of paper that I need to cover, so we're, we're going to get to the ugly stage. That's, that's where I'm hoping to get to today. Get the rest of the paper covered and the hair will be in the ugly stage. And then next week we can polish off the hair and maybe just polish off the rest of the project as well. So my plan is for next week to be the final day for this project. And I might even do some of the polishing off camera um, if I get bored or something. Hope everyone had a wonderful Monday and a, a good weekend. Hope you had a good weekend. I had a nice weekend. Oh, hey there, Wendy. I'm glad to see you. Glad to see you in the stream, Wendy. I don't I don't feel like I get the get to see you enough in the live streams. So it's always a pleasure. I was actually 
um, streaming over on Twitch earlier this morning for a number of hours playing chess. Kind of got kind of got back into to playing chess. I took took a break there past past few weeks. Uh, you had a ton of fun yesterday. Uh, oh, with my sister. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I, um, my sister, my sister always talks about Yashandri. She always mentions uh, when you guys do the the live streams or the the Facebook chat or or whatever it's called. I forget what it's called, but. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, my, actually, now that now that you bring up my sister, we were we were chatting on uh, on Sunday, and uh, my my sister has been out to visit my wife and I here in Poland, and she stayed for a month or just about a month, um, a couple years back ago, and she's been wanting to come back out. And she wants to she wants to come out with her husband, Tom, and uh, do a little bit of traveling around Europe. So I think that, um, you know, uh, gosh, I can't even remember, Netherlands, right? That's That's where you're... You're in, what's the, oh, it's like Netherlands plus something else, isn't it? <laughs> I can't remember. But that's, that's where, you live in the Netherlands, don't you, Chandri? We, well, hopefully if she comes out and we do a little bit of traveling around Europe, hopefully we can find ourselves over there. <laughs> Oh, hey there, Mara. Yeah, I've had I've had a pretty good day so far. Okay, yeah, southern southern part of the Netherlands. I was trying to think of the other name. <laughs> Isn't there two names for the Netherlands or something like that? There's like two sections and the whole place is called something and then two sections are called something else. <laughs> I can never remember. Oh, Holland. Yeah, that Holland. Yeah, that's the other part. Yeah. I knew there was like two names of the same place or something like that. I couldn't remember. Yeah, I couldn't remember.
Oh, hi there, Julia. Uh, and, oh, we have another Wendy in the chat. Hello, Wendy. Um, what part of Poland? I, I live in Katowice, which is kind of the wet, southwestern corner of, of Poland. We're not that far away from the, uh, the Czech Republic um, border. I mean, we're still a pretty decent distance from Czech, but uh, we're a little bit farther from Germany, I believe. So pretty close. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't describe us on the border, but we're fairly close. Yeah, the the light effect, it it does look really cool. It looks a lot better in person. Hopefully when I finish the project, I can take a nice picture of it and and you can see the real effect because on video, I just can't get I I I look forward to setting up a new studio when my wife and I move so I can get better lighting. Cuz I have these I have these desk lights that um are really close. And for some reason, like, because they're so close, they create just like a harsh light. If I adjust the contrast or the, the um, like the, the lighting on the camera, it just doesn't adjust well for some reason. And I, I've tried to get it to look the best that I can, and I really, I really can't get it to look better than what it does. But it's always really disappointing to to go back and look at the live stream and see how um, how different the picture looks on video than it does in person. Like I can't get it quite the way that I want. Um, you have a question. Okay, so you ordered the pencils that I'm drawing with now, the Carbothellos, uh, but you have a question mark. Did you order or do you want to order? Yes, I'm, I'm using the Carbothellos. Um, are so are these pencils just as soft as... No, uh, so pastel pencils are um, hard pastels. Pastel pencils are not soft pastels, they're hard pastels. And uh, if, they were, if they were soft, you'd never be able to sharpen them. But you can mix the hard and soft pastels, so they're, they're perfectly fine to, to mix those two. Because the background is soft pastels here. Oh, hi there, Lisa. So I'm still just using the black right now and blocking in all of the really, really dark shadows in the hair. And you can see I'm not, I'm not doing any single hair strands. I'm just doing shapes. And that is the first step doing hair. And this, the steps that I go through with the pastels are the same steps I go through with colored pencils and with acrylic paint or oil paint or watercolor paint. It doesn't really matter what uh, the medium is. All of the steps that I take to do this are universal so you don't have to worry about learning the steps 
uh, for every for every medium you can simply rinse and reuse and it's uh, universal between mediums so if you even graphite if you're just um, working monochromatically the same the same steps apply you want to do the dark the dark shapes first uh, I often refer to them as squiggly diamonds because they usually have a diamond like shape but they're wiggly so I usually call them squiggly diamonds Um, the Carbothello pencils I would describe as being a little bit softer than the Faber-Castell uh, pit pencils, yes. Yeah, the, uh, the Carbothellos are very soft in comparison um, to the pit pencils. They're, the, the pit pencils are really great, though. Uh, I would say the softest pastel pencils are the uh, Karen Dash Genevs. Those ones are by far, by, by far the softest pastel pencil. I'm trying to find where I'm at here. Okay, so this, where is that? Oh, okay, so that is here, kind of a triangle, and then I have this triangle here. Yeah, kind of goes up like that. Sometimes it's too easy to get lost in the line art. have some other dark shapes up here so I have this one right yeah I have this one and even if you don't get these shapes like absolutely perfect you have a lot of leniency with uh, the pastel pencils so don't you know stress yourself out too much with like perfecting these shapes because they will change over time anyway as you introduce your other colors. Uh, besides the Jackson's handmade pastels, well, um, the, the thing about soft pastels is that they're pretty much all the same. And I've, I've mentioned this before and I've I get a lot of emails and questions um, about which soft pastels I recommend because I, I can't I can't even count how many emails I've gotten uh, from people that you know they they want to uh, get my intro to pastel course and they're always asking me oh which, which soft pastel brand do you recommend and um, the the truth is there's not a lot. There's not a lot that goes into soft pastels. The ingredients, the, the ingredient list is very, very small. And the price changes based on the quality of pigment that they use in them. Uh, because soft pastels essentially have two ingredients. They have the raw pigment and then they have whatever binder they use to hold that pigment together to form the shape of the soft pastel. And because there's only two ingredients, it's really hard to make bad pastels. You know, it's kind of like, like how do you mess up a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Like, you, 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 you almost can't, right? There's, if you pick different jellies, you pick different peanut butters, the texture and the taste is going to mildly change, but overall it's going to be the same thing. And so when it comes to soft pastels, you really have the most 
flexibility in your purchase as far as which ones you go with. And um, I would, I mean, I recommend just getting like something that's convenient for you. That's probably the best option. So if you, if your local art store or something like that has a decent set, you know, you can try them out and see if you like them. Uh, the things that you will often run into with with the soft pastels on whether or not you end up liking them or not, usually it comes down to usually it just comes down to um, how they feel when you use them. Hold on a second, I gotta check this. And so. Uh, Okay, sorry. Um, I needed to find a spot for my line art. But one of the brands, one of the brands that I like is the Fabric Castell. I really like the Fabric Castell soft pastels. Um, aside from the the Jackson's pastel, the Jackson's pastels are really nice as well because they're they're basically unison by a different name. The other thing about the Fabric Castell that I like is they come in, uh, they come in the square shapes or the the rectangular prism shapes, and I much prefer my pastels in that shape because you you have um, a much cleaner edge, which I find to be super helpful in landscapes when you're doing trees and grass, especially trees. Trees are for sure. Um, but it's a it's a mild advantage. I wouldn't say that you should avoid buying a pastel simply because it it has um, you know a particular shape. But you almost can't go wrong with any brand. That's that's the beauty of pastels is that you can almost get away with any brand as long as it's not something that you know is like ridiculously cheap from like a non-art source, like a department store or something. But even some, even some like, you know, department store selections of art supplies will still sell like some quality items. Because sometimes quality items, they're, they're abundant. You know, you don't have to like get them from specialty shops or anything like that. I hope that that answered your question. Uh, I see you are drawing now one color. Did you map out values in the sketch? No, no, I, did, I didn't map out the values in the sketch. So the line art for this project, when I do hair, the line art that I generally create, I will um, map out the darkest shaped values and um, it's kind of hard to describe but essentially when I look at hair when I look at hair there's there's it can be broken down into three to four colors almost always simplifying down to three um, in the case of this hair it's I simplified it down to four but what I do is I separate it into three kind of blocks I guess you could say and that's the way that I approach hair. So I look for the darkest color, whatever the darkest color of the hair, and oftentimes it's black given the light source. And um, even if it's not black, I just kind of treat it all the same anyway. So I look for that darkest color, and in the case of this portrait, it is black. 
And what I do is I just map out these dark shapes. So you can see these shapes that I'm making. They don't really have any... They're not very hair-like. You know, they're, when you look at this, if you were to isolate it, and I just showed you this, most people probably wouldn't identify this as hair. And that's the way hair often looks. It just has like these dark shapes that when isolated, they don't look like much, but they're very, very important. And then once I have this part uh, mapped out in my line art, then I will start to incorporate other, um, other lines, which usually just represent highlights. So I'll do dark shapes and then I'll do like highlights. But in this project, I didn't bother doing that. I didn't map out highlights in this project. I simply just mapped out the dark shapes because everything else is really neutral in the hair. And being that it's neutral, I just, I have a lot of flexibility there. So I didn't really feel the need to uh, go above and beyond with mapping out the uh, the value changes of the hair. So I just kind of left it as is with the dark shapes and um, didn't bother with the highlights. Mostly because of the lighting in this project anyway, seeing as that, seeing as how most of it's in shadow. There. So that's that's what I'm going to do for the black. And now what I'm going to do... Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lighter brown color. So I have two browns. I have a darker one, which is this uh, 635, and then I have a lighter one that has like just a touch of kind of a grayish orange, and that's the 625. Hold on. That... That number being rubbed off really bothers me. There, 625. And what I'm going to do with this color is I'm just going to cover the rest of the hair minus the, sh uh, minus the highlights. So I have, a, I have a couple highlights in here that I'm going to just kind of sketch around really quick. And rule about highlights, you guys should know the rule, with, uh, rule about highlights. And this isn't highlights in hair, this is highlights in general. The rule with highlights is always make them bigger than you think they are, because you can always shrink a highlight and it's really hard to make highlights bigger if you make them too small. So always make your highlights bigger than what they are. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. Yes, everyone, please hit the hit the like button for me. So here's pretty much the blocked in highlights. There is um there is like a highlight that runs through here, so I'll just kind of sketch a little shape there, and then right, right about here there's a highlight, so I'll just kind of sketch in a little shape there. Uh, and then down here actually, so that's all highlight. Um, highlight comes across there, creeps up here, cuts across, and goes like this. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much like that. Um, and then down here, it's a highlight. There. So now everything else, I'm just going to color 
with this this color here and I'm going to do my best to always maintain um, a pencil stroke that goes in the direction the hair is flowing with pastels it's not that extremely important but um, it's a really good habit to always have with colored pencils it's a little bit more important because you have less flexibility there but um, it's always good practice no matter what so I've got to go right around the edge of the face here. There. I'm going to do all the flyaways later on. So making the hair not look like a, a, a weird helmet, I'm going to take care of that later on. But for today, I'm just going to do the foundation. So um, back to the, the steps. So step one, fill in the dark shapes. That's all you got to do. You don't have to worry about any individual hairs at all. Step two, is to pick the foundation color. Now in this case, I'm going a little bit brighter than what I need to do. There's two shades of brown. There's like two distinct shades of brown in this hair. There's there's kind of um, like a, a lightish, a lightish brown, and then there's the darker brown. And I'm doing the base color with the lightish brown because I can easily cover it up with the darker brown. And besides, with the with the darker brown, that's where I'm going to start adding a little bit of the texture as I fill it in. So you'll start to see it look more like hair once I start adding in that that other that other color. Oh, hey there, Arnie. This lighter brown really only shows up like in this area of the hair. It's not so much down here or anything. Just kind of up in this area. I'm not concerned at all if I kind of work over top of the black because this color is not really going to cover it up in one, one pass. So you don't have to really work around the black uh, with any like degree of concern. You can kind of just work right over the edge a little bit. And uh, you'll still be left with a good shadow there. So.
one of the things you want to try really hard not to get caught up in is details. You you don't want to get you don't want to get stuck adding individual hairs. If you get stuck in that phase, oftentimes the hair turns into spaghetti. And we all know what spaghetti hair looks like. It looks like garbage. So don't don't make spaghetti hair. No spaghetti. I do not allow spaghetti. I'm not gonna uh, worry too much about the uh, degree in which I have the paper covered down here at the bottom. Because I'm gonna use, mostly I'm gonna be using the darker gray. I mean the darker brown. I'm still not sure what I wanna do with the hair band. She has one of those, uh, those tangle-free, like springy, weird hair ties that's supposed to like not get cut in your hair um i i'm it's it's a minor detail i'll probably just create something that's bland and kind of just fades into the the hair color or i might grab that that red color and give it some red maybe just make it like a red hair tie and that will match the lips and just kind of add you know, a little bit of balance to that color. I still need to rework the lips. Um, they're not, they're nowhere near looking good enough for me to call them done. So I'm just gonna leave a little gap there for the, the hair tie. I'll just make the hair tie more of a cloth one, I guess. I'm not going to cover that completely because I need to do it with the darker brown. Am I going over this later with a blending stump to smooth it? Yes, I will. I will use the blending stump to smooth out the hair. Um, but now it's a little bit too too soon to worry about that. Not really enough uh, color on the on the paper to concern myself with blending just yet. I'll probably blend once I have the paper like completely covered and I have all four of my colors applied. Because I have one color for the highlights, which um, the, the color in the highlights 
of the hair is the same color of the highlights on the skin. All right, let's not forget about this little piece up here. Pencil is getting really dull. I'm gonna have to um, sharpen it before I utilize it again in the future layers. Can I get the edge there, please? Struggling. All right. Um, I'm going to take the highlight color and I'm just going to fill in the highlights. This is the 110 color. Same color, like I said, that we used in the uh, highlights on the skin. So it's kind of a just a cool gray. I'm just going to apply it generously to those areas of the highlight shapes that I blocked out there. And fill them in. It doesn't appear to change the color very much, but it does. Gives them a kind of a bluish tint. We'll worry about the fine tunes of the highlights um, later on when we start applying the colors with a little bit more purpose. And by purpose, I mean kind of putting in the uh, texture of the hair. Now it's time to grab the dark brown. So with the dark brown, um, now this is where a little bit of uh, skill comes in. Uh, up to this point, I don't think anything that I did required like drawing skill or really anything. Um, if you have the line art down, then you can easily just kind of fill in the shapes, uh, which is what I did. Uh, now that I'm applying this secondary brown to, to start creating a bit of the volume in the hair, and a little bit of the value difference. Um, like for instance, over here on this side, this side's fairly straightforward, but there's a section up here where the highlight comes down and you can see like a, a thick strand of hair kind of like just curling down uh, into, the, into the face a little bit. And there's some variation there. So that's where you have to like kind of pay closer attention to what's going on in the hair and draw it accordingly. And that that does take a little bit of skill, but not very much. Small amount of skill is all you need. And that's pretty much that. Not going to worry about any of the flyaways for right now. So we're still just doing broad shapes. But you'll want to, uh, as you get further and further along the hair with the hair, you're, you're going to want to pay more attention to your pencil direction. So the way that you move the pencil, you really want to start focusing a lot on the direction the hair is, is flowing. Hello, uh, Amanda. Pro proportions are not okay. What does that mean? This, this brown is not quite as dark as I need it to be. So I'll have to go over a lot of this with the, with the black.
So um, this is this is technically step four of the hair process. So step one, dark shapes. Step two, base color. Step three, fill in the highlights. Step four, using using this middle color. This is like the middle color from the base and the shadows and whatnot. Um, you want to do what I, I refer to as bridging the gap. So what you what I mean by that is is you have the brightest values and you have the darkest values. And now what you need to do is create everything in between, thus bridging the gap. And that is just a process of following the uh, the first two axioms of doing hair, and that is always moving in the direction that the hair is flowing and maximizing the contrast. So those are the two two important axioms that you've got to follow during this this step. And you can pretty much you can pretty much just follow this step, bridging the gap. Um, all the way up until you get to the fifth and final stage, which is adding the final details, like the, the flyaways and stuff. Because it's, it's really not until you have the flyaways that hair really starts to get its texture, its final form and whatnot. Oh, hey, what's up, Cece? I was wondering if you're still watching. I didn't see you in the chat. You must have had some problems with it. Uh, do I work with oils? Sorry, I didn't, I missed a question. Um, oil paint or oil pastels? Well, I suppose I can answer both regardless, but um, yes, oil paint is my favorite medium of all time. And um, I don't like oil pastels even a little bit. So I don't work with oil pastels. Hello, Elf. So the way that I recommend uh, continuing on with this step is you can notice you can notice some pretty heavy lines throughout uh, me f using this color, and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to like map out the flow of the hair throughout. So you can see kind of this big swooping line that I've created around here, because she has like this part of her hair that 
uh, swings all the way around really smooth curve like that and so I'm just reinforcing that and then over here you can see the the line direction changes and so I'm, I'm using that line direction uh, and making it a bit obvious for the purpose of uh, mapping out the hair direction and what that does is it just helps me later on uh, to refine the hair and create the, the hair texture. Because there's, there's parts in the hair where, you know, accuracy is not that important. Once you have the, the, big, the big shapes in, the hair just kind of comes to life all by itself. You don't have to like be so accurate that every single strand of hair that you're able to see in the photo needs to be exactly in the same place. You can still get it to look pretty much just like the photo as long as you have the big shapes of the hair. Once I, once I apply this color uh, everywhere I need it, I'm going to blend it out and smooth things and the hair should start looking pretty pretty good from there uh, and then I'll just work back through my colors work back through all of the colors that I've used so far including the black uh, to refine the hair and that's still just part of bridging the gap I would say and a couple a couple layers of, of going back and forth between all of those colors uh, you'll, you're gonna have a really good looking base for the hair and then once you add the flyaways on top of all of that you'll have wonderful hair all right um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna smooth this out with my blending stump uh, let's see, did I miss any questions? Would I say male or female hair is easier to blend sketch color? No. I, w I would say they're the same. Short hair is, uh, it's, short hair is a little bit different in general, like short hair like how I have mine, it's a little bit different, but all the same rules apply. Yeah, all the same rules apply. All right, so I'm just gonna use my, my blender here to start smoothing out the hair. And this is gonna make the hair look really soft in comparison to what it looks like right now. And that's gonna give me a, a great foundation for uh, making adjustments. Because right now it looks a little rough and hair is not rough. Same thing with the blending. You want to try your best to just keep moving in the direction that the hair is going. I'm going to start with the lighter sections before I move into the black. Especially around the highlights. I don't want to I don't want to cover up the highlights too much. Sometimes, sometimes the hair can look a little weird when the values are off. But once I get back, and once I go back through this with the black things, 
It should it should really start to look like hair. But I don't think it looks too bad as is. The color's just a bit off since it's not dark enough, but aside from that it looks looks pretty decent. Not bad for what, 50, 50 minutes? Yeah, not too bad. That's pretty quick. I covered a lot of paper, so. The, the paper that I'm using is pastel matte. Anytime I work with pastels or pastel pencils, I always work on pastel matte. No, the, the pastel paper, uh, the pastel mat that I'm using, it's not scratchy. It kind of has a, it, it does have a rougher texture, but it's very mild. It's very mild. I would say it's kind of like, um, like a, a dry velvet, like a, like an extra dry velvety texture. And so it does have a little bit of roughness to it, but it's very, it's very comfor comfortable. It's not a harsh texture by any means. That's not a highlight there. I'm just avoiding that little section there for the ponytail or the hairband. Can I use graphite transfer paper? Yes, you can. You can use graphite transfer paper to transfer line art onto your pastel mat. Is there a brand of pastel mat you prefer? There is only one brand of pastel mat. Claire Fontaine is the only brand that makes pastel mat. So that, that makes it that makes it really easy. <laughs> um, Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know, CC. I, everybody's preference for, for studio setup is the different, is, is different, um, you know, subjectively. And I think my biggest problem is finding, finding ways to, uh, to buy what I need, not necessarily like finding a way to have it set up. All right, now the hair looks a lot softer and I need to sharpen my pencils. So if you give me, if you give me like 45.7 seconds, let me just mute the microphone.
Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I wanted it to take. The black pencil just didn't want to just didn't want to get sharp. All right, uh, let's see here. Where am I going to start? I'm going to just start over here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just adding a few smaller lines, a little bit more of the hair texture, but I'm still focused more on the values than I am the actual individual hairs or anything like that. So the hair over here is quite a bit darker, so need to generously apply some of the black. Uh, do I need to know how to draw in order to get results like this? No, you do not. You do not need to be able to draw to get results like this. You simply need to know how to plan. That is all you need to know how to do. I think a, a majority of the people that follow my tutorials uh, on Patreon, I, th I think a majority of them don't draw. I think they just color. And the way that I teach, I see, I don't teach how, I don't teach people how to draw. I don't want to teach people how to draw. That's not what I like, that's not what I like to teach. I like to teach people how to use color. And coloring is a very, very different skill than drawing. I can assure you of that. And so I, uh, I always provide the line art for my projects so that nobody needs to worry about drawing. Yes, there is a reference photo for this project. Um, the reference photos and the line art I provide over on my Patreon, on my Patreon page and uh, speaking of Patreon, um, I do want to mention that this, this is the last pastel tutorial, this project here, um, before I, I make the switch back to, uh, to Patreon. So the colored pencil project is already being streamed just on Patreon. Um, And after this project, the next pastel project will also switch back to Patreon. Oh, good morning, Barbara. Good to see you.
Do I prefer making a landscape or portrait art uh, using pastels? Um, well, I love doing portraits. I think regardless of the medium that I'm working in, portraits are pretty much where I like to spend most of my time. Um, if I'm using just soft pastels, I do really enjoy making landscapes, and landscapes are a lot of fun with soft pastels. I don't know if I'd want to do a soft or a, a, a landscape with just pastel pencils. I don't know if I would if I would enjoy that as much. But portraits. I, I really enjoy portraits a lot. Um, the human subject is my favorite subject in art in general. Uh, I love doing figure drawings. We're doing we're doing a, a figure uh, for the colored pencil project right now. Uh, a male figure and. Yeah, that's that's kind of my favorite subject matter. I love uh, doing figure drawing. If if that's all I did, that if if I didn't teach, and I could actually make a living, uh, just drawing, that's probably what I would want to do. That and painting it, painting or drawing or coloring or whatever. That's probably where I'd want to be. Do I use an X-Acto knife in the hair? No, I do not. No X-Acto knife. I gotta hold myself back from doing any flyaways. Sometimes it's really, really enticing to to do one or two or three or all of them. Gotta be patient with the hair. Gotta take your time with it and just focus on the values first. Don't do, don't sneak ahead. Don't ever sneak ahead and do the the flyaways too soon. Because working around, working around flyways is not fun, I can assure you. You do not want to go too, too quickly to the flyways. Alright, I'm going to just put a black band here for the hair tie. And maybe I'll add red to it later to match the lips. Actually, I have that red color right here, so let's just add it. So here's the hair tie. And it's going to be so lost in the hair that it you have to look for it to even see it. So that's one of the reds, and here's... Wait, that's not it. Oh, it's this color here. This is the 770 color. Now you can make your hair tie look anything, like anything you want, but I use the same colors that I used in the lips. That's the 770 color and the 330 color. I'm going to use some black over here for the shadow. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think a lot of people are guilty of getting ahead of themselves uh, when it comes to coloring, because the thing with any really it, it it's beyond color. It's just creating anything ever, you know. Um, anytime you create something, there's always an ugly stage. It doesn't even it. You could be sculpting. You could be carving wood. You could be painting a house. It, literally creating or doing anything creative, making anything, there is always an ugly stage. Um, and when it comes, to, I think, when it comes to art, painting, drawing, all that stuff, I think the ugly stage is probably the least favorite of everybody that creates. And the problem with the ugly stage is that a lot of people rush through it. They, they try to get out of the ugly stage as fast as possible. And what ends up happening is they cut corners or they skip important parts of, of the process. And hair, I think, is one of the most notorious uh, of the ugly stages where people rush through. They want, they want to get right into the single strands of hair and all of that, and what ends up happening is they get spaghetti. I mean, you, can, you could probably just do a Google search for uh, portraits, uh, like painted portrait or uh, drawn portrait or whatever and you can you can just see spaghetti everywhere there's just so much spaghetti and a lot of people a lot of people struggle with hair and um i have always found hair to be one of the easiest things to do regardless of the medium because from like the earliest of my portrait work that I've that I've done when it came to the hair I always just broke it up into the base shapes and I got I, I almost never had spaghetti I don't know I don't know if I've ever had spaghetti in in my portraits going all the way back to like my first portraits I don't know if I've ever had spaghetti Out of context, I just realized how weird that sentence is. But you guys, you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, hey there, shiny. Yeah, that does sound something sound like something I would like.
Oh, sorry about that. I need to get some water. All right. Um, the next color that I will use, I am going to refine my highlights a little bit. Actually, now that I think about it, I missed a few lines up here in this highlight. So I need to break up this highlight to make it look like hair. There we go. So uh, switching back to the 110 color, I'm just going to come in here and create some highlights. I, I want to do flyaways so bad. Even I'm fighting it. Even I'm fighting it. Right, a few little bits of highlight down there, and then some that run through the ponytail down here. Uh, I'm going to blend these out. Um, these are not single hairs. They are not single hairs. Just trying to create some variation in the values. That's the that's the key part. But you can start to see just like just building up some layers has really started to to make the hair come to life a little bit more. Um, I am going to switch back to my dark brown, which is that six three five color. Curious of these, what looks like light behind her arm? Yeah, they they're lights. All of it is just lights. <laughs> uh, what is the different? Uh, what is different about the tall ends of the ponytail that you're that you left them plain paper? Uh, well, these are highlights. The, these parts of the hair are highlights. Um, but I need, once once I finish the base of the hair and I add the flyaways and the single strands and all of that, those highlights will make more sense. They, uh, because I, I used masking film, right, to cover that. I wasn't gonna cut out individual strands of hair. So what as I did, I made it very rudimentary and just kind of cut off like jagged edges but the hair extends out quite a bit farther than that. And once I add that in, those highlights will make sense because uh, you see the pattern of lights coming down. Yeah, you can see it. The pattern of lights coming down, well, that comes right over, right over top of her ponytail also. And so I have a patch of light right there and a, patch, a small patch of light down here um, that also hits the side of her arm there a little bit. All right, so I'm switching back to the 635. And I'm gonna just come in here with more lines. I'm still, I'm still not drawing individual hairs. I want to just make that um, very clear. I am just kind of 
reinforcing the texture of the hair by moving my pencil in the direction that I mapped out. Remember earlier where I said that I was, I was mapping out the direction of the hair? Essentially, I'm not even looking at the reference photo really at this point. Um, I'm using what I mapped out to just draw lines in that direction essentially. So I'm filling it in with color with another layer um, and I'm just using what I mapped out earlier as my guide to filling it in and applying more layers. Because <clears throat> the more layers I apply, the softer the hair looks and just the better it looks. And since I'm adding lines that all go in the direction, um, so in the very beginning stage, I was almost just kind of scribbling to cover the paper. Here I am, in, instead of covering the entire paper, I'm just kind of creating lines in the direction that I mapped out to make the, those minor adjustments that I need for the color. And in turn, that makes the texture, that makes the texture of the hair, and that's what I need. I need that texture. So again, I don't want I don't want anybody to get caught up in making like individual lines. You just need to go in the direction of the hair. That's all. Uh, it's always about the effects and not the thing. Really, like the lighting in this painting. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I, I picked this, I picked this particular portrait uh, because I thought the lighting was going to be really difficult. I thought, oh, that, that, that looks really hard. But uh, as I actually got into it, once I put the background in, and the, you know, the background wasn't hard. The background was very easy. These shapes are not like perfect or anything like that. Um, the portrait itself really just kind of came to life because of the background. If I remove the background, the portrait doesn't make a lot of sense. But because the background reinforces the lighting of the scene overall, um, it, it's really what made this, this project look as good as it does right now with, with the, the lighting. Because, I mean, you guys were there for when I did the skin. Uh, the skin was essentially just apply one color, except for where the highlights are, right? And then, you know, add some other darker colors for the shadows. The, the skin on this project was probably one of the easiest portraits I've ever done. And so anybody that followed along with this project, I imagine you have pretty similar results to what I have right now. Because in sheer terms of difficulty, this was not as difficult as I imagined it would have been just looking at the reference photo without actually doing it. So I'm going to go down here and uh, add the tips of the hair because not a lot is going to change. But you can see now that I have the rest of that hair there 
the shadows there, or the highlights, I mean, they make sense. I just wanted to add that part of the hair so it looked a little more natural down there. Still need to make some uh, small adjustments, but I am just about done. I am going to blend this one last time and call it a day. So uh, this is what the base layer of the hair should look like. Uh, before blending it and after I blend it it's just gonna have a smoother texture overall and then next week for the kind of the final final part of this project um, what I will do is I'll add all of the flyaways in the final texture of the hair and once I have that done, it's on to the polishing stage, my favorite part of every project. Now you can, you can kind of cover up a little bit of the highlights as you blend out here because you're going to add more later on. Um, with the individual hairs being very key to bringing out those highlights. So don't be afraid to cover them up just a tiny bit. Oh, you are welcome, Julia. I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it to the live stream. I appreciate the support. There's still, there's still a bit of work that I need to do on the rest of her, um, but I wanted to kind of leave that for the polishing stage, and I'll say I'll say that like next week is next week will be the final stream for this project, and I'll try to do as much of the polishing stage on that stream as I can. But yeah, there's some there's some fine tuning that I need to do on the face um, before I call it done, also. The skin overall just needs a, you know, a little, little bit of tweaking, a little bit of polishing. So I'm about to wrap it up if you guys have any last questions. Uh, polishing, it's just what I, it's just, uh, it's just what I call the, the, the stage of the, the, the creating process where I make really small micro adjustments to make it as, as good as I want it to be. I'm not actually polishing it. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I don't like grab a rag and some, some kind of polish and you know, make it shiny. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, didn't mean to confuse anybody that, with that. Uh, when I finish a colored pencil piece, how do I finish it so it doesn't transfer onto other pages of the sketchbook? I, I don't. I don't, well, I, I mean, pastels, I, I put pieces of glassine paper between them, but for, uh, <clears throat> for colored pencil work, I don't do anything to it. 
if I were to sell it, I would um, put a fixative on it. Only colored pencil work, not pastel work. Alrighty, everyone, that is going to be it. So, um, like I said, next week I will finish off the hair. I'll add the flyaways. I'll probably also add one other color to the hair. She has uh, some hints of orange. And what I might do, um, I might actually, I might even use this. I use this in the skin to give it a little bit of an orange look. I might even use this color, but I might use something more extreme to get some some just nice uh, kind of saturation out of the, the toning, but that's going to be it for the hair. I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of people would be really satisfied with just getting their hair to this stage, and once you add the flyaways, it will completely transform it. So the flyaways on top of this base you're going to you're going to love your hair. So uh, if you can get to this point, then you're already miles or kilometers ahead of of a lot of people doing hair. So, um, anyways, hope you enjoyed the live stream, and uh, yeah, I will see a lot of you Thursday for the colored pencil tutorial over on Patreon. Uh, and if you're not signed up on Patreon, I have a link for that in the description. But I will see you next time. Take care. Peace.